So I've heard many, many great things along my fragrance journey about this fragrance. I've tried a few clones, but I've never had my opportunity to really enjoy the real deal for what it is. And today, I want to tell you my full thoughts after spending some time with Mesa's Ranch's Kirkjohn Grand Soir. Stay tuned. So before we jump into this, this was sent to me for review by Twisted Lily, but as always, it's not going to affect my thoughts or my opinions because every time I come on this video and talk to you about a fragrance, it's thoughts, feelings, and emotions that I evoke from smelling these fragrances. So let's get into it. So starting off with the box presentation, this is the 70 ml 2.4 ounce, which is a strange size. Don't get me wrong. And they do come in a 200 ml as well. Get batch information. A bit more fragrance info on the back nothing else on the side gold the kirk john logo and then this was my first time with a kirk john fragrance so i'm not used to this little slide out style and they do have this little booklet with more fragrance information that actually comes in the little insert box that i slid out but i've been just kind of stowing it right there and then nothing too extravagant very very clean look mason francis kirk john paris Nothing going around, nothing on the bottom. Two piece box. Now into this bottle, that beautiful ambery, dark whiskey colored, beautiful juice is Mason Francis Kirk John Paris and Grand Soir on the front. Nothing around the sides of the back. Fragrance information on the bottom. Francis Kirk John logo on top. This is a fingerprint magnet cap. It doesn't click into place, and you do have the Kirchhoff logo in the glass on the back as well. It doesn't click into place, but it does hold very, very firm. And then nothing on top of the atomizer button itself. Standard looking atomizer. It's a very good atomizer. <sighs> Man. Let's get into this scent. So, notes. Very simple note breakdown, as you can see. So, if you like amber and vanilla, this is a phenomenal amber and vanilla fragrance. But what's different about this one, I don't know how many that, of you that have tried this get this on your skin the way I do. I get such a fizzy, effervescent benzoin for like the first two and a half, three hours. It's dominant benzoin. I love a good benzoin. This is kind of like the heart of what Creation E is. If you were to take the booziness and the tobacco and the heliotrope and all that extra, all that amalgamation of notes and took the heart of the, the heart and soul of the fragrance, the amber, the benzoin, the vanilla, you would have this. It's of the utmost quality. It smells incredible. Second to none when it comes to amber fragrances. From what I've tried, this is the king of the mountain for amber fragrances. I uh, have a few friends of mine that swear by this fragrance i understand why now that i've had several days to spend with this fragrance i've given it a few wearings several tests for every night i've been spraying it on my arm as well it's it doesn't change much it's not completely linear where it's the same from start to finish but what changes on my skin is in the opening like i said for the first two to three hours it's dominated by benzoin which benzoin's fizzy vanillic type of resin and you get the amber and you smell the vanilla scent, obviously. But once that benzoin starts to fade, which like I said, two to three hour range to where the benzoin really starts to fade, it's vanilla and amber. And the vanilla in this one, it's not overly creamy. It does add a beautiful vanillic sweetness because there's vanilla throughout. It's a slightly powdery vanilla. Not a lot of powder. This isn't a super powdery fragrance. The amber provides that beautiful warmth that it's known for. This is a very, very high quality amber that's used in here. At least to my nose, it smells of the highest quality. And then, like I said, that light powder that you get from that vanilla. It's not an overly creamy vanilla. It's more of a dry powdery vanilla. And you get that warmth from the amber. That's pretty much from 
later in the heart all the way through the dry down what I get. It doesn't change much once the benzoin kind of goes away because I get a lot of benzoin with a little bit of amber and vanilla up top for a few hours and then it's all amber and slightly powdery, lightly dry vanilla. Gorgeous scent. I don't have any other amber fragrances that smell like this. Like I said, king of the mountain for amber fragrances that I have, I have smelled. Dare I say this is more so a benzoin fragrance than I would call it an amber fragrance just off of my skin with my experience with this fragrance. Absolutely delightful. Now in the performance category, it's what you would expect. It doesn't go away. What was it two days ago was the last I wore it. And I took my shower at the 10 hour mark and it was still, was still projecting, you know, not monstr you know, monstrous projection, but still coming off of my skin. It was far, far from a skin scent at the 10 hour mark. This is every bit of a 12 hour fragrance, probably beyond that for an eau de parfum concentration because of the quality of the oils. That's what happens when you use natural high quality oils. You don't need an X straight fragrance. The higher the quality, the lower the concentration you need is the best way to put it. The Eau de Parfum in this has bordering nuclear performance on longevity. And then when you get into projection, it's not beast mode fill a room. It could technically classify as beast mode, but it's not overbearing for being as strong and room filling as it can be because the CIs on this one is massive for hours, long and strong scent trail but it's such an intoxicating trail on this fragrance you're not going to offend anybody you're going to turn heads with this fragrance this is a bona fide head turner it has the performance to be a head turner as well i don't care what mask somebody has on when you walk by they are going to smell you whether or not they see anything is another story but they're going to smell you performance is above average to pretty much beast mode in longevity and in projection. You get what you pay for with Mason Francis Kirchhoff fragrances from quality to performance. And they're very replicated in Grand Soir is nothing short of a heavily replicated amber fragrance, but this is the original. This is what I would call the Mac Daddy for sure. Also, I would say any age, male or female, there is no gender to this fragrance. There is no age range to this fragrance. I would say it's not the most casual fragrance, but you absolutely can wear this with a t-shirt. It all depends on your mood, really and truly, but definitely leans more on the classier side. It will go very well dressed up, but it can easily dress down in your fragrance wardrobe. You're just gonna smell really expensive for a guy wearing a t-shirt. It's kind of how you can look at it. Well guys, that's my thoughts. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback. I love hearing from you guys. How many of you have tried Grand Soir? Incredible. One of the best fragrances in my collection, without a shadow of a doubt. That intoxicating is a great word to place on Grand Soir. If I was to just describe it in three words, I would say powerful, intoxicating, classy. That's a good way to describe it. And if you're interested in purchasing it or even just getting a sample, there's a link down below for Twisted Lily with the 10% off coupon code. Until next time, I will say if you get your hands on Grand Soir and you give it a spray now, very confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.